fuck boring. G'day, hey, uh, Nick Hoyle, and this is my A92 FX GT. I've known this car for I think over 10 years now. Yeah, yeah well I think this year is the 21st year that I've owned it. Really? <laughs> when you brought it, was it inducted? Was it was, force yeah. inducted? Was it? No, it was supercharged. Yeah. It was supercharged, yes. Supercharged. That's how they go around yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, and, you know, we had supercharged, and, and the reason we ended up going with the turbo was. Like, had a, a radiator overheating, maybe a heat gasket or something, so we yep. took it into a mechanic and. It was more money than I had because I was young as and yeah, yeah, no yeah. money. Because it was 20 years ago. <laughs> so, um, so, and then my mate said, oh, she's too low. You know, right, it's fun, all right. And then here we are later. Here we are later. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it's just so neat, though, being in a little old A92 because, you know, these are the cars that we all dropped around as teenagers. Yeah. You very much did. This is the car you dropped around as a teenager. Okay, here we go. I haven't driven an A92, I'd say at least 20 years. Easy, solid 20 years. So probably about the time you've owned it. Yeah. <laughs> just turn it on, nothing. No, just um, turn the key. Back in low way. Yep, yeah, turn sweet. the key and just let the... Okay. That was like five mil of throttle. Holy bro. Absolutely ridiculous. Oh, it turns nice. Yeah, kind of. It's, it's like I said, it's more set for the track, but it, and you certainly will find the limits quite easy on the road. Oh, it just feels so balanced and so light and nimble. Having a lot of fun though, man. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does have that effect though. Bottom end is a Toyota um, 1800, so out of the Toyota Carina, 1.8 litre. It's a 7 a FE, right? 7A FE is what it starts its life as, yep. and um, they have, uh, they're pretty asthmatic engines to be honest with you. Yep. Um, so, but you, they're the same footprint as the 4A GE from a block perspective. So, yes. so um, they are slightly taller, as I said to you before, but then the 20 valve blacktop head slap straight on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, so in the bottom end, um, Start at the bottom. The sump is a is a five liter MRP winged baffled sump. Cool. So um, it needs more oil capacity, you know. And um, so that's it's a wet sump. I'd love to do a dry sump, but I mean you're 15k to do that. 
factory crank, uh, factory pistons. Um, as I said before, we had to drill them out to make them suit the 20 valve head because they're a 16 valve piston. Um, ARP, ACL, all that kind of stuff, studs, head studs, um, mains, um, bearings, MRP rods, they're the first forged rods. And then in the head, um, it's actually factory cams. All we've done is um, a really good poor polish job on both sides. Valves have come out, new seals, and have then we've put Supertech spring, springs. Have you locked off the VVTO? No, so it still has VVT. Oh, and it still yeah, works? So you, still yeah, the VVT yep. works, yep. Man. VVT is uh, off early because the turbo takes over. So it's yep. to give you more down low yep. with the turbo setup. Yep. yep. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much it in the, in the internal. So it's not it's not a hugely complex engine. Come across, we've got a Quartermaster twin plate, E52 LSD gearbox, and a Cusco two way LSD. So, so what does the E52 come in? EMAR2. And what's your ignition system? Because that looks rather beefy from here. Yeah, so in fact, um, you've got two ignition it's systems a factory, going on. factory cam angles and sensor. Yeah. Um, and that's just a little cap, yep. you know, instead of having a dizzy. Yep. Um, the coils are now GDR coils. Yes. Um, so we were running the Bosch coils. Okay, so that's why they're both in there. But we had um, a bit of a miss. Okay. And I think it's just the age of the coils. Yep. And. Um, it just made more sense to do this. It was with, with the technology now, right? Yeah, it's about 700 bucks, but it had about 10 kilowatt wheels. Yep. Um, just by doing that. 1000 cc ID one, you know, I injected yes. an Amex, 1000 cc's. Yep. Um, got a 044 equivalent uh, yes. in, in the rear and a Volvo 500 in tank, the surge, feast or surge tank at the back. As your surge and lift, yep. Yeah, comes up into the rail, split fork in, yep. one exit, so the idea is you don't get pressure drop across the rails. Yep, like the Subies do. Turbo Smart um, FPR, Turbo Smart Blow Off Valve, Turbo Smart Wastegate Controller, E-Boost Waste Controller, E-Boost 2, um, Twin Turbo Smart Wastegates down the bottom there. Yeah, I thought it had twins, I remember when you did yeah. that. Yeah, it's a dual scroll turbo, so the exhaust manifold was built with split pulse in mind, and it's a twin scroll turbo, so as I said before, Borg Warner. Um, you know, you feel the boost comes comes early, but it's more how hard it comes on, right? Yep. Like it's, it's, it just, and you can see the curve, it's sort of, 40, 3800 it's starting to make boost, by 4600 it's just like, for bam, you know? Yep. And all of a sudden, like you say, you, you, you're at 7000 RPM and the wheels are spinning, you're like, fuck, what do I do? I've got to change gear. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> There's a lot going on. Next gunk 2, 70 millimeter, photo body. This was all custom made, the plenum. Evo, I think 456 radiator, and um, Creedy intercooler sits at the front. It's quite, actually quite big, you probably can't really see, but no, that's the size of the core itself and the tanks, you know? Yep. It does a good job, and there's an oil cooler on this side here. Well, there's your air filter, um, Jesus. Air filter's down there, yep. Yeah. And then, yeah, so then we sort of go down to, I guess, your brakes, and you can see two-piece rotors, they're big. Wheel specs, 17 by 9, plus 20. Oh. And all this body kit, the bot, the bumper, the bonnet, side skirts, and the um, rear bumper were all... That is actually a factory bumper, but we've we just had some caps put on the bottom. Um, so I just, I just, I just like the way it looks. So I was like, I want to do that to it, you know. Yep. Three inch exhaust from the turbo back. There is a resonator in there. It's not loud. No, it's right? not like loud. When your rear brakes are AE one hundred one, so it's slightly larger than the AE ninety two. Yep. And then HSD coilovers. Um, so that you would have noticed on the road. That's I mean, why I said it's a go kart. Like, yeah. Sway bars front and rear, white line, the, the biggest ones that they have. Yep. Every bush underneath the car, and the control arms, the trailing arms, the. Um, Everything, every single bush that could be replaced has been replaced. You know, and, you know, all of that kind of development is done, and that's where it's it really is a, a bit of a jump in a drive for someone. It's it's more jump in and learn how to drive, as you as you experience today. It's not the sort of thing that someone could just jump in, and even if they've driven a lot of cars, and, and get straight which, away. Which I have. Yeah, I've driven tons of cars. Don't get me wrong, I haven't driven a whole lot of fast cars, but I've driven a lot of cars. Yeah. I can jump in just about anything. I can claim it. I can get in and pedal it. This was awesome. Yeah. If, if I had 35k and that track in Stratford was built, bro, I'd be driving out of here. Yeah, yeah. This is a whole lot of car. Yeah, it it is really a is. whole lot of fun to drive. Um, like it's, it's hard to fathom it until you actually get yeah, in and squeeze that button. We've already established you bought the car early, what was it? Yeah, I think 2020, uh, t t shall I say 2022? Yeah, no, 2002. 2002. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's creepy, eh? Oh man, I must It's because we're old. Yeah, we're, we're old now. Mm. Yeah, like I say, what started out is a let's turbo this thing. Yep. Um, It'll be cheap, bro, type thing, and you know, and you'll buy a manifold for 500 bucks and this and that, and 
you know, I bought an ECU from a, from a bloke second hand that just didn't work. I don't know what was wrong with the Microtech um, LT10 and that was... Oh, that's going bad. Supposed to be good technology at the time, but that cost me an engine at one point. Um, Tuna cost me an engine, leaned on it too much. So I think we're on engine six. <laughs> I thought you were going to say five to be fair. Yeah, I think this is engine six. Yeah. yeah. The 250 kilowatt that we were running around on there today is completely enough. I, I notice now I've been driving quite a bit. I do go, yeah, I f it feels flat in third gear to me. Okay. If I'm in the low boost. But first and second is all it needs, but yep. in third gear I feel like, yeah, it could use a bit more. Yep. See, you know, we've got that one little pull there in third gear and like, yeah. you know, it was. It's, it's a lot, hey. It's proper fast. It's a lot. Like, yeah. it was pr it's, it's not becoming of this chassis. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, like, yeah. And, and that's what I was saying about sort of the, the 100, 200 kilometers an hour. When you get above sort of 170, 180 on this thing, it feels very light. Yeah. Um, it's the sort of thing where you want some downforce. And it you always need a wing that. It's yeah. just got the factory wing, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, but it probably could use some real aero underneath. Some side effect love. To make it kind of. Um, yeah, um, but it's you know, around the track it holds on. You don't generally get over 200 that much. I mean, no. Pukekohe, the back straight, you'd be getting close to that. Um, old Pukekohe, sure you'd get into get into top gear for yep. yeah, but um, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, new Pukekohe, um, just tapping 200 going to turn one. Well, the current Pukekohe, there's far too many horses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to go around one health horse at a time now. They're showing the age. Yeah. <laughs> you've got kids that are going to grow up now and never be able to go to watch the drifts of Pukekohe or never go and watch a supercar made of Pukekohe, man. That's... Yeah. It's sad, eh? I bought this because I, I, I like the car, the, the style of it and all that kind of thing, but really, um, it's different. You know, you, you know people say I want to do something different, but, you know, they're quite even. I put different wheels on it. It's not really something different, you know? Um, and I think that we've built something that really, really is unique. And yep. it's a two-door, the two-door really appealed to me. It's, yep. just, it's just a cool little thing, you know? Because my brain says it's a GDI chassis. Is that how you think, or is it just the dash? Because that's a GDI dash, eh? Yeah, it's a bit of a bit so now. I mean, I've wrecked about four other cars. Okay, so you put the dash the way. The dash came with it, but okay. um, I've wrecked about four other cars along the way. But do you think it was a GDI in its life? I'd say so, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. they were really sought after it, weren't they? When we were young. Yeah. 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 But what's next? Oh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm really quite committed to finding this a new home. Yeah. You know? um, and, um, you know, I'll, whoever buys it will support them, whatever they need from a knowledge perspective to be able to continue to use it. You yeah. know, I'm um, marketing manager for Super Sprint and D1NZ, and, and um, I've been working with those guys. Plus years, I guess. I am surprised you haven't ended up with a drift car, to be honest. I love an S13. Yep. Um, a drift car or a road car? Yeah, I, look, I don't know. Um, See, if I had an S13, it would have to be a road car. They are just such a neat car. Yeah, the, the, I mean, for me, it's like, do I try and get something that's completely classic? Yeah. Or would I just get something to go and beat on, you know? Yeah. Um, and I'm always looking at Sylvia's, you know. Um, but the thing is, is that I look at it and I go, well, I haven't used this very much. I've used it once this year and a couple of runs around the locker have all done now. And yep. The thing is, these days, Gator, there's so many amazing factory cars that you can buy. Yep. Yeah, okay, so it costs you more. But like. But does it, though? But, but exactly. Yeah. And, and, and now that we're old, we've, we've got an income. It's not like we're scraping together the last 200 bucks each week. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um... You know, things that appeal to me, Audi RS4. Yep, very much. Um, I've driven some of those new Cupras. I mean, they're a really nice package, man. Yep. What's, what's the advice to someone? So, I'm 19, I just bought a hatchback, it's non-turbo, it's supercharged right now. What What's the first piece of advice you tell the person? And don't say sell it. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that's a good question. I, it, it's a really hard one, right? Because, like I was saying, I've had a few people message me that I literally in that situation there. and. Um, the, the thing is, is you can't you can't turn someone's passion off or desire to do it. You know, you couldn't turn mine off at the time, right? No, so, not at all. So there's no amount of like, oh, it's going to cost you too much, and you're going to get stuck with this thing for 20 years. It's going to change that. Like, yeah. It's it's going to be what it's going to be. Best piece of advice would just be, you know, check, check, and triple check everything you do, and you know, don't. 
try to shortcut things and don't try to cheap ass things because yep. it, it'll come back on you.